In this video, let me show you how to make the graph for the friction lab, okay? I'm kind of zoomed in here, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I think I need to be like this. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to graph this stuff, okay? So notice how I've labeled these headers, so weight, static friction, kinetic friction, okay? I'm going to select these guys and do this. With that selected, I'm going to insert a chart. Now notice it's, it's helpfully suggesting a column graph. This is a terrible graph for this, okay? We don't use column graphs for this. What we want is, you have to scroll down here, see what says scatter. That doesn't look like any graph anybody would make, but it's the right one. So scroll down to scatter graph and click that, okay? And then notice that my, my x-axis here doesn't go to zero. Okay, so we're going to fix that. We do want to go to zero for that. Okay. All right. So let's customize this graph. Let's go. First thing I want to do is give it some titles. So the chart title is uh, Force of Friction. Force of Friction on the counter. All right, there it is. That's, that looks good. That looks legit. And then pull this down. See, there's, there's the, this heading. And then under that, there's a pull-down menu. So let's go horizontal axis. Horizontal axis is going to be weight. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> what did I just take? Weight in newtons. Okay. And then pull this down again, and the vertical axis title is force of friction. Force of friction in newtons. Okay. Now, I'm practically going crazy because it starts with two there, so let's fix that. Okay. So let's look at the horizontal axis. And it says minimum value, maximum value, right? I want the minimum value to be zero, please. There we go. Now we're good. Maximum value, I don't even know. 8, 10, does it look like 12? Is it 12? Does 12 work? Does that give us a right side? Oh, it gives us a right side. That's fun. OK, so now we've labeled. We've got a title for it. We've labeled it. OK, but what we want to do is we actually want to put straight lines through these points. We want to put straight lines through those points. OK, so let me show you how to do that. So go to series and scroll down. I see where it says trend line. So again, click on series, open up the series. We don't want to joke about this. And here's where you can change, uh, uh, you know, like you could change this to a diamond. I think it's nice to have. Um, I'll apply to all series. Static friction, I'm going to use, uh, I don't know, triangle. You could just change these, right? Uh, kinetic friction, I want to use a, uh, circles are lame. How about a diamond? How about a square? There we go. That's good. You don't have to do that. I'm just being hyper. Anyway, scroll down here. See where it says trend line? Click trend line. Okay. And then we want to put one on both things, right? So kinetic friction, and then go static friction. And then do trend line like that. Okay. Alternately, alternately, you could just do this. You can just go both series, trend line. Okay. Either way. Right. And then it says label, no label. We do want to label. We want to use the equation. Okay. Now, here's the cool thing. See that slope of that line, 0 0.404? See these coefficients of friction? They're about the same, aren't they? Okay. So this is really, this is a better coefficient of friction than these guys. Notice this guy right there, the 0.224. Okay, that coefficient is, a, is about the same as this. If you kind of average those, that's what it would be. This, the slope of this line is, if somebody hired you to find this coefficient of friction, this is what you'd do. You'd actually do a best fit line just like this. Okay, um, I think this is it. Okay, except watch this. You can name your tabs. So this is the counter. Okay, now, are you guys ready for pro tip? This is pro tip 1.0. You've done all this work, and this is half of the work you need to do for the lab. Well, less than half, because you have to answer the questions, right? Wouldn't it be cool if there's a way to just, like, I want to do all this, but with another set of data? Well, there is a way to do that. So watch this. I click on, see this little pull-down menu right here? Click on that. What if I duplicate this sheet? Now I've got this, and what if this is on my paper, right? So let's rename this. This is on the paper, okay? 
what if I've got different data? Right? What if I what if I do it on the paper and it's um, uh, let's see let's maybe maybe make it uh, 0 0.9 and uh, two. Look at the graph. Do you see as I type it in, it's uh, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't know. How about five point uh, five point four? There we go. Notice how it's redoing the graph, it's redoing the equations and all this stuff. So if you just get your new data and type it in here, it's going to redo all these calculations, it's going to redo the graph, and then you're done. Isn't that fun? This is why grown-ups use spreadsheets. They're very powerful tools at your disposal. I think we're good. I think I've said all the words. Did I say cabbage? I feel like I didn't say cabbage. Although cabbage, to be fair, is not important here. Okay, so again, just go in here, you're, after you're done with your whole graph and everything and it looks the way you want it, go in here, click that, and click Duplicate, rename your tab, and then just go in and edit the, the data part, just this part. Okay, go in and edit that part, and type in your data for your other surface, and you're done. Then you just have to paste it into your document, answer the questions, submit it on uh, Canvas. All right, I'm done talking.